Hey everybody, I've got this AMF lowrider that I'm restoring, and the portion of the project that I'm up to is aligning the chain and the rear sprocket to the transmission. And what I'm going to do is I want to try out this chain alignment tool from Motion Pro. I happen to see this online. I've seen some other gadgets with sophisticated laser beams and whatnot, but I figured this is going to be better than eyeballing it. So let's do it together, give it a shot, and see how it turns out. Mine is model number 080048. I picked it up on Amazon for $15, and as it states, tool body clamps squarely to the rear sprocket, so the alignment rod will indicate sprocket alignment to the chain. Sounds simple. Regardless of the technique used, of course, it's uh, obviously easier to have the bike straight up and then be able to jack the rear wheel up off the ground with the transmission in neutral. At this point, I would generally rotate the rear tire, and I would see which way the chain would have a tendency to lean on the rear sprocket, is it pushing to the right or to the left, or is it staying in the center? And that would tell me how I was supposed to adjust the chain. We could see there's some play there. Is it sitting in the center? And that's how I would make my adjustment. I'm not going to be doing that method today. Also, there are other things I need to check on this chain. We're going to do that now. Eyeballing is, of course, good enough to determine the slack of the chain. That's what we're going to do now, make sure that we have the proper slack. Since I'm going to have to remove my chain guard to do this job, I'm just going to remove it now. As I'm taking this off, I remind everybody that the rear axle bolt is loose, and I make sure it's loose before I attempt to make any adjustments on this chain. Each manufacturer has their own specification as to how much slack there should be and where you should be measuring the chain from. This one is just a little bit loose, so I'm going to be making an adjustment, turning both adjusters a couple flats turned tight at the same time. So we're going to turn this one. Then on the other side, I turn it in the same direction. And then we're going to go do one more, same direction on the other side, and now I'm going to retest. With the retest, I now see that the slack appears to be correct and within specification. We can now proceed. One more test before we get started. I'm going to repeat this chain slack test as I turn the wheel at regular intervals, allowing me to identify loose or tight spots on the chain. If I find something really excessive, it could be a chain failure a chain that cannot be reused. On this one, there are no excessive loose or tight spots, so I can proceed. But this is an important test you don't want to skip. So the unit comes in the box in two pieces. One side is that metal rod, and you definitely want to make sure you don't bend it. Even check it on a glass mirror, make sure it's flat. I had to tear up the entire box to get the other half out. And it looks like anodized aluminum. Set screw is then opened up. Then the rod is inserted past the set screw in whatever direction would be appropriate depending on what side your chain is on. And then the set screw is snugged down. For my purposes, with the rod pointing forward as we rotate this piece, we can see that the flat side holds onto the inside of the sprocket and an outer set screw is on the left hand side. So that flat piece right here situates right here on the flat portion of the sprocket over the chain. I'll lay it on there and I will try and get that rod parallel to the chain. Seated just like that. And then, once I have it set up, I will tighten down this set screw just to snug it into position. Looking through the rim from the other side, we can see how this is set up when it's mounted correctly. And right off the bat, a simple examination shows that the rod is pointing outward towards the left and not parallel with the chain. We want to bring it in to the right to make it parallel. So while viewing the tool and working with one flat at a time on each side, I'm going to be tightening one and loosening one to rotate the rear axle. So as I stand here, the left side will get one flat loosened, the right side get one flat tightened. I'll reevaluate and then repeat and repeat and repeat until it's aligned. We could see I overshot it and it's pointed to the right. So I'm going to reverse this process. Now the right side will get one flat loosened and the left side one flat tightened to bring it back into the middle. Views from a camera can be very subjective with parallax distortion, so it's important to know that you're very lined up behind it when you're looking at it or you won't know what a straight line is. Especially through a camera, it's a lot more difficult. It's not as difficult when you're just looking with the naked eye. It's important to note that every time these adjustments are done, the slack needs to be retested and readjusted if necessary. Again, slack will be adjusted on both adjusters in the same direction in unison. That slack adjustment can in turn require a readjustment of the alignment of the chain, so keep the chain adjuster on there till the end. But once that chain alignment is perfect and the slack is perfect, it's time to lock down that rear axle.
again, still keeping the chain adjuster tool on there as the rear axles tighten down. The rear axle should be locked down as set forth in the specifications of the workshop manual of your motorcycle. One last look shows everything's still lined up. So now we'll loosen that set screw. Loosen it all the way so it'll clear the chain. And remove the tool from the bike. Drop on our necessary axle bolt covers. Reinstall the chain guard and then we're finished. If you're interested in seeing more about this lowrider shovel head restoration project, click this link in the top right corner. We'll take you to a playlist for this project. And that's it. I think for a couple of dollars, this chain alignment tool worked out pretty good. This was an honest appraisal. I don't get any kickbacks from the company for this. I hope you found this video useful, informative, and entertaining. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>